the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. chapter 1 and verse 8 but you shall receive power say I receive. I receive everything to be received can be rejected he said you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you we began to discuss this yesterday and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem in all Judea Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth the Bible says that to be a witness remember our discussion a validator a defender of the purposes of christ it takes more than desire you will need power the power of the holy ghost that it takes more than desire to do business with god in this kingdom there are many well-meaning believers there are many well-meaning preachers, many well-meaning business people. But the possibilities of the kingdom are not only controlled by God's desire, they are controlled by the availability of his power that you access. Are we together? Mm. Psalm 92 and verse 10, my spirit is fired up tonight. Parush kalabragaduziyata but my horn shall thou exalt. Please just increase the volume a little for me. Like the horn of a unicorn, the horn of a unicorn never faces down, even when the head is down. Even when a unicorn is down, the horn does not face down. It says, my horn shall thou exalt in the similitude of that of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Isaiah chapter 40, please. From verse 1 to 5, Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort ye, comfort ye Kenya, says your God. Verse 2. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she had received of, of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. We are reading to verse 5, 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. For every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough place is plain five hallelujah and the glory of the lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the lord has spoken it there is a dimension of glory that is coming upon this nation please listen to me there is a dimension of the effulgence of the power the grace of God that will tabernacle upon men and women in the similitude of the prophecy of Joel he said blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm upon my holy mountain then he begins to describe a type of people man terrible and great he says that it shall come to pass in the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions upon your handmaids he says 
Listen, let me tell you this. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. The days that we are coming into are not days of discussions, excuses, and explanations. We are in the days of his power. And the Bible says in the days of his power that the people shall be willing. That we will sponsor possibilities that are not affordable in the world of men by an agency that is not human. Psalm 63. It was David who hungered to see the power and the glory of God so much from verse 1. And David himself began to cry and said, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. The purpose for the hunger, verse 2. To see your power and your glory revealed in my life the same way I saw in church. When I came to church, I saw the sick healed. Transport that reality to my home, oh God. When I came to church, I saw that with one prophetic word, a man's life changed. I want to see your power and your glory in my life as I have seen in the sanctuary. I desire to see your power, your glory, the effulgence of your wisdom to dumbfound principalities and powers, a species of people that defy the limitations of life. Empowered by the spirit that every church in Kenya is on fire. Doesn't matter which one you go to. Fire from everywhere. You cast out a demon from one church before he lands in another assembly. He's sent by the power of the Holy Spirit that you fortify the spiritual borders of your city by a dimension of power. He says, say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Psalm 82 and verse 5. The psalmist cries a tragedy we must change tonight. He says they know not, neither will they understand. Verse 5. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. The next verse says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. Someone shout no way. that the music ministers in this city will lift up the string and it will be like it were in the days of David the sound of anything that comes from you can heal can deliver can bless you become a living wonder a testament of the lordship of Christ over a territory So Isaiah 61 says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's a messianic prophecy. First for Jesus and then for his church. Because, because the Lord had ordained, anointed me to number one, preach glad tidings. It takes more than understanding the gospel to preach glad tidings. It takes the anointing. He had sent me to bind up the broken hearted. This is more than psychology. It takes the anointing to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty. Isn't it amazing that a man can look free but is bound? Says scripture. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. It says to proclaim the acceptable year. It takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God. Then by the anointing to comfort all who mourn verse 3 to appoint do you know what that means to select the day that it will happen 
to appoint does not mean to suggest to choose a day that you can say today should be your day of liberty to appoint unto them that morning zion it says to give them beauty beauty is a gift that can be given for ashes he says the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified this is the heritage of the sons in light we have come to insist tonight let me tell you the truth if you believe that which god is saying your life will change in a way that will surprise you I became tired of religion I became tired of church not in a negative way I read my Bible and as I listened to preachers I was disturbed because what I read was not what I was seeing I left church confused where is the grace that produces the miracles why do we have to keep explaining and explaining and prophesying and nothing happens to the people we say god bless you they return with no testimony god lift you and they return with no testimony i speak that your life will change and they return with no testimony it frustrated me I asked many pastors questions and they could not answer. Some said I didn't have faith. I believed I did. You see, one of the ways the anointing of your destiny calls you is through dissatisfaction. You begin to sense that I, I may not know what the problem is, but I know something must be wrong. This cannot be it. And that hunger drove me to search scripture i will never forget the day i placed my hand on the book we call god's generals when i opened it it was as if i was reading about my brothers literally when i read i said this is it the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses don when got it well though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before we may be few but there is an army of hungry and angry men saying this cannot be the way it should be the way we beg people to come to church is a sign that something is wrong because the bible says all nations will flow the way we go ask and plead and say just be patient the house of god and so my hunger began to rise to the heavens and I cried I said Lord there has to be more this is not you this does not look like you where is your power and your glory where is the wisdom why is it so hard to save sinners you waste your time and talk for hours and at the end of your conversation they say i will think about it my god what were you saying then he said for i am not ashamed of the gospel it is the power not the suggestion of god there is an ability upon it that compels the listener to the point that believers are used to the word not working it shows by our testimonies we didn't expect it to work we are surprised it worked and I said Lord you must reveal yourself to me I cannot tell a generation lies there has to be a dimension of God that we must reveal we are the preservers this baton has been passed to us and we cannot fail listen to me the hunger of days became weeks weeks became months can I tell you the truth 
God loves you, but his presence, encounters are not cheap. It will take hunger that is greater than your desire for anything to really find God. We, we have a, a generation that cheapens encounters as if they just happen. No, nothing of value comes cheap. He allows your hunger to stretch you. One night, here is my sermon tonight. My hunger had reached the heavens. I knew if he did not come, I may die. And there he walked into my room, the king of kings himself. My hunger had gotten to the heavens. I was not interested in church, fame. I didn't want ministry. I wanted an encounter. Something I could live and die for. I was tired of saying things I was not sure of. Preaching something you go back and say, I hope I'm right. No, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled of the word of life. It says, but I know whom I have believed. I'm not trying to guess. I am persuaded. When the Lord Jesus appeared to me, Where is the other gentleman that played keyboard with you yesterday? Is he here? Please call him. Two of you can do it together so that there's something about the strings and the spirit of prophecy. It says, I will reveal my sayings upon the harp. Now, my hunger had gotten to the heavens and when Jesus came, now please look up the strange thing pastor when i saw jesus i knew respectfully that many people represented representing him did not know him i was in shock this was the man i'd been preaching about jesus the son of the living god any part of him was what you're looking forever you know you cannot look at a human being forever if I look at your legs after a few minutes, I'm tired. I find something else to look at. Not Jesus. Brilliance. I told you yesterday, he never spoke a word, but he said many things. That was when I learned that the language of God is not English. It's not Hebrew. It's not Latin. The language of God is light. He does not have to talk to speak. His light is a voice. It speaks to you. Did the Bible not say the entrance of thy word give it light? And he stretched forth his hands towards me. When he stretched forth his hands towards me, the kind of light that came from his hand, I stand before God Kenya. How I did not die is something I will ask him when we meet him in glory. No man can receive that level of light and be alive. And everything entered me and then he left I don't know how he left but he left and my life changed I picked up my Bible and there was a straight line from Genesis to Revelation I saw things I never studied I understood what Paul said how by revelation the mystery was made known unto me please listen very carefully there is a reason why i say what i say in one other encounter the lord appeared to me and said son from today i give you my presence as a gift and then i saw this angel standing before me and he said this angel will walk with you and I said, what is his name? And he said, he is called the angel of the Lord's presence. Wow. This angel. That's what is responsible for the miracles and the signs, the wonders. The impartations. And then in one other encounter, the Lord gave me an instruction. He said, every city and every territory and every nation I send you to. There must be people in that meeting that the light that came from me to you must you cannot leave that nation and that territory until some of those people please help them Hela <laughs> 
Kele baruti se hasekete baratu si akata. Pragados kela du si amahashka barus kabata. It's a spirit of revival. It is a restoration of the act, the ordinances of God. It is not the bragging of a man. This has nothing to do with being a man of God and ministry. It is the privilege of being the host of the presence and the power of God for a generation, for a territory. Because when he wants to minister to Israel, he finds Jacob. He sends a word to Jacob and then it is lighted upon Israel. And every time he grants the opportunity to come to a nation, it is more than a church meeting. It's the coming that opens the two lift gates of a nation and begins to allow spiritual realities to find expression even by the Spirit. Now the Lord is that Spirit is hers. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then he says, but we all with faces unveiled, beholding us in a mirror, the glory, the Shekinah of God, that we are changed from one dimension of glory to the other. Tonight you are immersed in a sea of his glory, the glory that excels, the glory that can change, the glory that can turn around the captivity of ages within a moment, within the twinkling of an eye. There are men and women of God here, like Saul, the son of Kish, who are about to encounter anointings, graces, mantles for their destinies. You've seen it in your dreams. You've heard it. It's been prophesied to you. But let me tell you, tonight is the night where you will drink of the wine that needs to be released for this generation. Kenya, the old wine is finished. Kenya, I stand and speak by the apostolic and the prophetic. Behold the new wine. The wine, the feast is not over. The new wine comes to you, comes to your altar. Women rising in the strength of Deborah. Women rising in the grace of Esther. Men like Elijah. Time will fail me, the Bible says, to talk of men like Gideon, Jephthah, Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness stop the mouth of lions africa that rejected stone the sofa is blowing that that which is dead will come back again to life whether it is for ministry whether it is for business, we are about to enforce the reality of the life and the power of the spirit. There will be a demonstration of the possibilities of the kingdom across the length and the breadth of Kenya in a way and manner. Hear me, I prophesy to you, there is a new anointing. There are young people arising from every church, from every campus, young people by the spirit under the influence of the spirit they will have encounters god is bringing balance to them the labor of the fathers of faith in this land have risen as a memorial to heaven and the time has come so we join the heavens to blow the shofar over kenya arise to a new dimension in the spirit where you are just open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray in the spirit please pray in the spirit don't be distracted tonight your life will never be the same your nation will never be the same. Harush 
Shalatos hebaranda skibadiyash. Passing crowds, lifting hands, bowing hearts, it's what I've come to do. Casting crowds, lifting hands, bowing hearts, it's what I've come to do. In your name, we will rise. I go not, you reign on high. We will rise. In your name, I go Now please listen Give me five minutes if you can And then we'll stand back and I'll begin to minister We'll not take much of your time Let me just share with you a very big key Please sit I want to share with you one secret That can grant a man access to host the power of God Jesus began to teach us on the mysteries of the kingdom and he said the hour has come listen very carefully that the son of man be glorified and then the very next verse he says verily verily I say unto you except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies the door that leads to life is death. The door that leads to power is death. More than your fasting, more than your prayer, more than your Bible study, the price for all of God is all of you. More than your money, more than your preaching, more than your intellect, you want all of God. The price is all of you. Here's how Paul says it chapter 12 and verse 1 romans i beseech ye therefore brethren by the mercies of god that ye offer your bodies not your spirits as living sacrifices holy unto god he calls it your reasonable act of worship the fire never falls until there is sacrifice upon the altar the men that god will use in these days are not just men of intelligence they are not just preachers not just men of oratory men who are dead only dead men can carry god the weight of god is too heavy for you to carry in your life you need to pass through a realm called galatians 2 20. i have been crucified with christ madam the anointing is on you look at me touch this woman for me i don't know who this woman is but i'm seeing this woman step into a prophetic dimension in the spirit nevertheless i leave yet not i but christ that lives in me he says the life that i live now i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me no eye has seen the bible says no ear has heard neither has it come into the heart of man that which god has in store not for prayer warriors not for fasting giants for them that love him not them that use him for fame not them that use him for a name death 
is the price for life. Hear what I say, preachers. Nothing will ever cover the lack of the presence of God. Our pews will remain empty until we sustain the ability to host God. We need to present God to a generation in a way and a manner that is greater than preaching. It's a reality. It is for a generation. Then we will see his power once again. We will not have to read books again to learn of his power. We will be the evidence, the living epistles. A restoration of patterns. Like Gideon. It will no longer be Ichabod. Where is the miracles that our fathers told us? We will no longer speak of that proverb. Because we will be living epistles of the possibilities and the realities of the spirit. We will influence governments and systems. The great will entreat our favor because we carry the charisma, the signature of the power, the life, the glory of God. Tonight I have come to blow a shofar over Kenya. And I have come to blow a shofar over Africa. It is true. This convergence is an awakening for Africa that the season has come. The season has come for that rejected stone to arise in power and glory. In 2005, I saw a vision of the revival that will come to Africa. I saw the anointing, mantles, living continents to different continents and I saw that mantle coming to Africa and hiding in people and places that they never knew they were already carrying it and God concealed it so that it does not corrupt their training because there are people if they know the grace that they carry it will corrupt their discipline so whilst you are sitting now you do not even know the kind of mantle and grace and unction that you carry it is sealed until the time appointed. I saw the formation of the army. I saw prophetic worshippers rising from Africa. Men who would write songs that were not composed. They would sing the songs of Miriam. Songs of angels received from a realm that is not bound in time. Songs that could not die. I saw ordinary people under the influence of the spirit nursing mothers that look like weak people in the spirit and the power of women like Maria Woodward Ita. I saw them with power arising from Africa. Tonight by the spirit of the Lord before I leave your nation let us give God an opportunity that that which has been locked up in the bowels of prophecy we will cry that he will rend the heavens tonight and let something that is holy and mighty come from heaven and rest upon our ministries and rest upon our lives. We have only a few minutes. I'll be praying for people and minister will be very fast. Our time is gone. But please let there be a desire tonight if you will please please listen to me keep whatever title aside for a few minutes and let your heart be open to contact something that a generation cannot deny the presence of God listen to me I do not stand as one who is greater there is an anointing I see an angel standing just at the back of um, Shalom there is the, that row I'm seeing an anointing just coming on someone I think one of the ladies there in the name of Jesus I declare right now please bring her here I want to prophesy to her there is a dimension of the psalmistry that this lady is stepping into by the Spirit of God Harusha 
Rakatosa lada katosa mehaseka tabaratu ziata. Bring her, Jesus. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom, shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom, shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom, shalom. You're welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Please listen, we're about to pray. Bring the lady that will shout loud under the anointing now to the hearing of everyone. Bring her. You're welcome in this place. Did the Bible not say you are come unto Mount Zion? It's not just a testament. It's a reality that you have come before the innumerable angels, the spirits of just men made perfect unto Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. My dear, I shift you to new dimensions in the spirit. I decree and declare that the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon you and turns you into another person by the spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome in this place. Please hear me. I want to pray for you now. But listen to me. There are three ways by which a generation encounters the anointing for their destiny. Number one, and I want you to listen very quickly. You can get an impartation directly from God through your hunger and through your encounter. But the biblical pathway is through the mystery that the Bible calls impartation. Please listen. Impartation is not anointing with oil. Impartation is the transference of spiritual possibilities. The possibilities that you command are predicated on the grace, the dimension, the mantle that is upon your life. Now please watch this. Out of her now. Release that lady now. In the name of Jesus. Out now. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is. Please hear me. Except God is not God. Any challenge that walk here with you this night. You will drop it down here. This place. Impartation is a transference of possibilities now please watch this our walk with God is based on relationship but kingdom advance is based on covenant let me explain to you what that means God cannot give everybody just anoint everybody at the same time no when he wants to release a dimension of his possibilities on earth the way he does it is to find a man when he finds a man he enters a covenant with that man that becomes a platform for allowing a territory experience that spiritual possibility and then that man becomes his he, the gatekeeper of that grace within the lifespan of that dispensation no man will access that dimension of grace ignoring that man and ignoring his sacrifice let me show you how it works listen Today, when we talk about faith and the word of faith, start from anywhere in the world, it will stop at Kenneth Copeland. He is the spiritual system alive today after Hagen that is the gatekeeper of that spiritual possibility. If Copeland dies, God will find another man and enter a covenant with him. 
that represents the continuity of that dimension of possibility hear me please no matter how you love God there are anointings that will not come to you directly they will come to you in alignment to men and women that by God's predeterminate counsel and through the sacrifice of alignment have entered a covenant that allows that dimension of grace to be visible within a territory hear me it is not human worship when he sends a word to Jacob it is because of Israel he does not send the word to Israel he will send it to Jacob through covenant and Jacob will take it and make it visible in Israel Elijah was such a man Elijah was not a, a, a man Elijah was a body carrying a spiritual system a spiritual system of the prophetic because every time the move of God is about to come Elijah must precede Elijah is a system the first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah was in Noah not just the man Elijah when Jezebel the same way Jezebel is not just a woman Jezebel is an antichrist system and she seeks to carry out her rule by sitting in government every time Jezebel is in a place she's looking for men of power because this is how she operates and so Elijah the Tishbite shows up and when he shows up and judges the prophets of Baal listen very carefully Jezebel picks a fight with Elijah and Jezebel vows that she must remove the head of Elijah Elijah goes to heaven Jezebel dies we come back to the New Testament and we see Elijah coming back again in a strange man called John the Baptist we see Jezebel coming back again in a young lady called the daughter of Herodias the bodies disappear but the systems continue and just like Jezebel said the young lady danced before the king and he said what do you want and he said the head of John like I told him I will remove his head I'm still at it again please hear me human bodies may come and go but the system of God is a relay the mantles that come upon you will not start from you it's a continuation of a program the bodies that carry it may come and go but the agenda remains the same this is what God has brought us to do is someone ready to pray are there people that pray in this place please I'd like you to find someone and be serious tonight in the next two three minutes lift a cry to heaven father let something from heaven let the grace and the unction come upon my life transform my life lift your voice and pray Kenya Hela barato kashada baratas. Can you pray? He na masera matanya. She la basena na dia. Na dia na dia na dia. Hala baruta siada. The power of the Holy Ghost turning our lives into signs and wonders. The power of the Holy Ghost shifting men by the Spirit to new dimensions. The power of the Holy Ghost turning businessmen to signs and wonders. Mary said, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. He said, the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Shall overshadow you. Man of God shall overshadow you. Businessman shall overshadow you. Someone pray. Pray for your ministry. 
you are about to receive something some of you who travel from other nations pray that the fire of the holy ghost will come upon you and you will go back to your nations with signs and wonders hallelujah hallelujah now please listen to me praise the lord now please listen whether you are inside or at the overflow i want you to listen to me three things i want to say very quickly please whether or not you are an usher i would like you to help me so that those under the anointing would not injure themselves because i'm going to be asking that you bring certain people out here and if that call is made then please do cooperate number two i want to plead with you that your heart be open we have to work with time and i'm going to pray for the sick and i'm going to just speak impartations over our lives let your heart be open praise the lord the first prayer thank you the spirit of the lord is ministering to me I prayed that prayer yesterday and the Lord is asking me to pray it again. There is a grace for speed. Please listen. Listen. Truly let me tell you this. It is true that there is an unction. There is a type of grace and oil that can come upon a man and put 10 years in one year. I believe. It says and I will restore. He can restore time. The years that the canker worm has eaten i want to release that grace now i want you to bring the people out i'm seeing the number 31 in the name of jesus over kenya i stretch my hands right now let the mantle and that grace for speed take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now i shift you speed in business I shift you speed in ministry by the spirit of the living God speed Heparuta Shalabakata receive speed at Ruwa conference receive speed speed and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I release speed, speed by the Spirit of God. Lift your hands, take that grace now. Now, I release that grace. I shift you to a new level in the spirit. This man will never be the same. I don't know who he is. But the Lord is saying to speak to him. That he's rising to a new level in the spirit. I'm seeing fire. And I'm seeing fire coming on people's hands. And the Lord is saying there is a grace. A healing grace is coming over Kenya. A strong healing anointing take that grace now men and women I'm seeing a healing grace bring them out sons and daughters of this land a healing grace strong anointing for signs and wonders
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Who is into telecommunications? The Lord is showing me a man here. You are into telecommunications. We will not waste time, please. Um, telecommunications. I'm seeing a woman. You are also into telecommunications. You are, wear, you are wearing a red dress and you are wearing glasses. Who is that? Is there someone like that? Please come. If there's someone like that, help me search quickly. I just want to prophesy over that person. We want to pray for the sick right now. Please make sure you understand what I'm saying. telecommunications you are into telecom I want to pray for you because I'm seeing a grace that is coming on someone a mighty prophet is arising from this meeting right now the Lord is asking me to release a grace there is a gentleman there is a dealing of the spirit that you have been going through seasons of fastings and prayer and i'm also seeing a few ladies too i stretch my hands i don't know where they are but in the name of jesus i call the prophetic fountain that is within your spirit Ephata, be open be open i speak and i call prophetic fountains blow the wind of the prophetic be open, Ephata. Let ministries step into new dimensions. The seeing eyes and the hearing ears by the Spirit of God. Who is Juliet? Juliet. I'm hearing a name, Juliet. Please, who is that? We have to hurry up. Let's respect time. Who is Juliet? Please. Juliet, I want to pray for you. The, this is a telecoms lady. You're all telecoms people. Why? Huh? Telecommunications. You're in telecommunications. Let me pray for this young lady. Where do you walk? Africa's talking. Africa's talking. Where is that? What is that? It's, it's a company that, that... Come, hold my hands. December, January is your month of strange breakthrough. I don't know this lady, but I'm saying it in the open. I hold your hands and I shift you by prophecy into that dimension. December, January, the Spirit of the Lord is saying... He's connecting you with men around your industry and it will shift you to such a dimension that you will marvel and wonder in the name of Jesus. Is this how you celebrate what God is doing in Kenya? Hallelujah. Who is Juliet? Where are you from, my dear? Please don't just come out at random. From where? This nation? Yes. You are from this nation. Where is your mother? Uh, she's at home. I want to pray. We need to rebuke sickness. Amen. Are, are we together? Your mother has started complaining of pains. Yes. Pains around her body. Do yes. I know you? Have I ever seen you? No. But I'm seeing that the devil wants to bring an attack of infirmity over your mother. But here at Rock Conference 2019, the Bible says when the enemy comes like a flood in judgment, the spirit of the living God will raise a standard. I speak and I prophesy to you by the hand of God Almighty. Let every plague of darkness be shifted now. And for you, step into a new anointing. Right now, I release you into that grace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What do you do, my friend? You are into telecoms. I will pray for you. Are you in this nation? In this nation? Because I'm seeing you travel out. I'm seeing you have something to do with UK. 
I want you to take note. God is taking you to UK. He will prosper you even by his spirit. I stretch my hands towards you and I decree and declare by the spirit of grace. Be shifted to that dimension in the name, the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the sick shortly, but I'm hearing the name Evelyn. Evelyn, who is Evelyn? I'm hearing a name Evelyn. I'm hearing a name Evelyn. What's her name? Please make sure you don't tell lies. Don't just come out because you feel like coming out. We'll pray for everybody. We don't have time to prophesy to everybody. Grace of God. The name of someone's church, there is grace of God. Something that has to do with grace of God. Who is that? I don't know if you're a pastor. I'm seeing a name like grace of God, something, something that has to do with grace of God. Who is that, please? Please, if you come out, let me. You are at the back, you are wearing yellow. Something that looks like yellow. This is there someone like that? Come. Where are you coming from? Hold on. Where are you coming from? I was behind the yellow. What's the name? You are a pastor? Yeah. What's the name of your church? Tabernacle of Grace. Grace. Yes. Okay, that's your wife. My wife. Your life is about to change. I don't know you, but in the name of Jesus, I decree and prophesy. Step into a new dimension. Take that fire. Now, in the name of Jesus, I open up the wells of the spirit. Madam, you are entering the level of favor. I'm seeing what came on Esther coming on you. And I speak to you by the spirit of God. Step into a new dimension of grace. I shift your ministry by the spirit. Do ministry with integrity. And may God take you to heights unimagined. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a pastor from Uganda. The Lord is, is there a pastor? You are from Uganda. Who is that person, please? You are a pastor. You are wearing suit with something that a light tie. Pastor from Uganda. A suit. Who is that person? Is there someone like that? You are from where? Uganda. Where are you from? Please don't, don't let's not make this place rowdy. Someone help me just control. If I prayed for you, you can just please politely go back to your seat so I pray for you you are a pastor in Uganda you pastor your church you love Jesus hold my hands I shift you to a new level in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ you will never forget this conference the weakness in your spirit man taken by the grace of God be shifted to a new dimension where is the pastor that just left here now You came for this conference? You came alone? Yes. You came alone? No. I'm seeing two people. Huh? What's he A? I come with my PA. Oh, he doesn't, he doesn't speak English? You came with your PA. Even your PA needs to be prayed for. Where is he? Come. Hey. Sorry, sorry. Where are you? Is he here? Sorry, John Bosco. Where are you? That's all right. Let me just pray for you. We have to save time. Sir, I don't know you. I don't know what it is that you do, but the hand of God is coming upon your life. And the Lord is going to shift you. The teaching grace in a mighty way is coming upon you. And I'm seeing grace for signs and wonders. Listen. All of these prayers, they are not a call for licentious and careless living. We are tired of all this nonsense in the church. We need some level of order and discipline and dexterity. So please do not mistake this impartation as a license for carelessness. We have abused the prophetic. We have abused the apostolic. But God is restoring order and restoring the patterns of God to the church. Just because you are anointed does not mean you should be careless. Africa, listen to me. Several people have risen in the prophetic in the apostolic and we celebrate and thank God for what they have done but if you do not manage the grace of God with character and godliness and discipline and self-control when we allow the flesh to override these giftings we end up messing up God's program and then it does not bless people so please do not think this is one of those men of God who has just come to add to the confusion we are a remnant that have come by the power of God 
to set things right to anoint and then to add with it the character of the spirit the love of the spirit I pray for you my friend look at me I lay my hands upon you serve him faithfully and may God shift you to levels untold man of God I pray for you by the spirit of the living God I just saw the angels of the Lord moving around this road that's why there are two people the power of God is coming on them right now just this row I just saw like the angelic please bring them out for me now I release you by the power of the Holy Spirit step into a new level of grace in the name of Jesus where are they where are you coming from huh I mean all of these people you are you are ushers your ushers all of you are evenings my God the person who shouts among you under the anointing is the one I'm speaking no 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 this is by the Spirit bring her this is the one I'm talking about but I will pray for all of you anyway I release you by the Spirit of God from every captivity that is not of the Christ I pray and I declare by the Spirit of the Living God let it come to an end right now and for all of you two of you hold your hands together you and you two of you I stretched my hands I saw oil coming on two of you I release you into this grace now this man and this woman step drink of that grace by the mighty power of the Holy Ghost my dear go and tell your family that at Ruach conference God has brought you a visitation I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God I don't know you from anywhere but you will never forget this conference for as long as you live because salvation comes to your family strange breakthrough is coming to your family Ekratos de Balatus Yata Krem Porusa Siata Bashi Hallelujah. I want to pray for the sick right now. Please listen. Everybody listen. In every conference, we must give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to take away burdens and yokes from people. I know that all kinds of ministrations have been going on here, but I believe that the Lord would want to set people free right now I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit I want to pray for the sick and then afterwards we'll prepare our hearts for the final impartation please let your hearts be open there may not be time to prophesy and speak to everyone and we must redeem the time we have to honor the time people have come they have invested their time their energy and we have to make sure that we conserve and we do the best that we can do South Africa South Africa South Africa now I know many people may have come from there but I'm seeing two people two of you came you came as friends from South Africa where are they um, if they are here let me just pray for them before I pray for the sick South Africa where are they celebrate Jesus you came from South Africa your pastors what do you do you're a pastor what do you do my dear I want to pray for you are you a pastor I'm seeing a businesswoman huh what do you do uh, I do road construction and recycling I want to pray for you two people will meet with you before the end of this year they will be part of a project that is ongoing in South Africa the Lord will use it and lift you in a strange way you see listen prophecy does not only reveal there are two dimensions to the prophetic there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic and the goal of the revelatory dimension of the prophetic is to sponsor faith to be able to reveal to you the details to the end that your faith be strengthened 
are we together now but the most superior dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension of prophecy where you make things that have no business happening to happen when the prophet said by this time tomorrow he was not revealing something that would happen anyway he made it happen I want to pray for you woman of God I do not know you but in the name of Jesus your life will never be the same there is a grace that is going to come upon you for burying women this is what the Lord is revealing to me number one and then number two I'm seeing the grace of an intercessor coming on you in a very strange dimension you are a woman of prayer but I'm seeing a higher level you will see things at a national level in the place of prayer this is what the Lord is revealing to me I'm going to pray for you can I pray for you very quickly before we pray for the sick father shift this woman to a new dimension in the name of Jesus let me pray for you my dear in the name of Jesus I give your business wings in the spirit rise to a new dimension by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus I program a climate of favor over you and I declare you will step into possibilities you never dreamt possible I grant you access to the hearts of kings and I compel in the name of Jesus that they will come to you they will bless you for the name of the Lord and for the advancement of his kingdom let's pray for the sick now please listen we're going to do it very fast here um, I know that many of you inside and at the overflow and those following online are trusting God for all kinds of miracles I'm going to pray for you now and all I want you to do is to lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest as a sign of faith we have to conserve time so immediately I pray for you and I rebuke that devil I'll give you an opportunity let's spare even if it's five ten minutes and we're going to have those that have been healed and touched and delivered very quickly is it all right if we use here I'm going to ask you very quickly to come please let me have a few pastors okay pastor Pete is here and they will just check you would we'll take a few testimonies to announce to the realm of the spirit that Jesus is still Lord over Kenya and when that happens we'll do the final impartation and we're done is that all right now please lay your hands everybody let's pray believe in the power of the Holy Spirit to heal and to deliver now listen there are two people who are going to shout under the anointing to the hearing of everybody I don't know why this happens it's a sign and a wonder but the moment that happens the healing power will begin to flow now please agree with me in the name of Jesus a loud amen Kenya in the name of Jesus 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 I command every devil of infirmity right now be gone in the name of Jesus I cause every spirit responsible for any and all forms of infirmity the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus now I declare to you Kenya be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus please help those under the anointing be healed in the name of Jesus my God miracles are happening the Lord is healing someone you have a problem with your neck the power of God is touching you right now I declare healing in the name of Jesus the Lord is healing someone of pile very painful condition of pile be healed in the name of Jesus and seeing someone who cannot hear is it that you cannot hear or you cannot hear well on your right ear I command that ear be open now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus multiple lumps around your left breast is going now by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost the Lord is healing a blood condition I'm seeing a blood condition that the Lord is healing be healed now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus lower back pain just right here I sense a very sharp pain the power of God is touching that person right now in the name of Jesus Christ there is a gentleman there's severe pain around your thigh here 
the power of God is touching you right now be healed in the name of Jesus someone has a very sharp pain around the shoulder here that pain goes right now in Jesus name in Jesus name there is a swelling ar around your abdominal region here I command that growth to disappear now in the name of Jesus the Lord is showing me someone you've been sensing pain here it looks like appendicitis the power of God is touching you right now the power of God is touching you right now I'm seeing a gentleman with um, I don't know if it's a growth around your throat your thyroid area here the power of God is touching you right now don't worry just receive by faith in the name of Jesus I declare be healed now I command every blind eye here partial blindness complete deafness blindness be open now in Jesus name every deaf ear be open in the name of Jesus if you are here and you are in a wheelchair or you are on crutches throw that crutch and stand up now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I decree and declare be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost um, the Lord is showing me severe pain around the chest here when you get up in the morning you almost you cannot lie down on this side to sleep because the pain is severe the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus Christ there is someone you lost your sense of smell you cannot smell things right now as I'm praying it's been restored right now you will begin to smell perfumes the power of God is touching you right now the Lord is showing me a lady you've been having a severe condition of your hair falling almost like a cancer patient I'm declaring be healed now in the name of Jesus now don't be embarrassed I want to pray for you one two three four I'm seeing four people don't come out um, what the Bible calls the issue of blood whether it's the period of your monthly circle or not you will have continual flow as I'm praying for you now after the prayer go and check yourself it stops forever in the name of Jesus it stops forever by the power of the Holy Ghost one two three four five you've been without a child for five years who is that one two three four five I'm seeing like five years. Who is that person? I just want to speak to you without a child. Make sure you are married. Are we together? Come. Your time of salvation has come. Don't cry. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is. Husband. This is your wife. I'm prophesying to you in the open, in the presence of all Kenya. I will not put my reputation on the line for nothing, but I stand by the God of heaven and I speak to both of you. I stand by the God of Jeshuron in the name of Jesus. I don't care what the medical condition is. I speak to you, madam. Look at me. I'm seeing something like a chain around your womb being loosed. I lose you now. 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 By the spirit help that woman by the spirit of the living God I prophesy to you go and return with your children return with fruitfulness this lady too I declare over you is over now I'm seeing a spirit out out of her now you're, you're trusting God I won't ask you to come out again because um, it is all of you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb so let's pray pastor get ready to dedicate so many children be free now now in the name of Jesus I cast that spirit I release you right now I'm declaring by the spirit of the living God my friend look at me this is your wife both of you madam lay your hands on your stomach I cause that devil now in the name of Jesus I release you from every whatever report the doctor said to the man 
man i change that report now in the name of jesus and i declare by the spirit of the living god according to the time of life go and return with your children in the name of jesus christ my sister look at me don't cry shout jesus as loud as you can it's over go and return with your child in the name of jesus christ where are you from huh what is taita taita what is that is where you are coming from it's a place in a i'm hearing Ta is it taita yes. that's what i'm hearing in the spirit yes. where are you from taita taita the lord is listen i'm speaking to you you see when god reveals like this it is to strengthen your faith it is not to show that a man is anointed no we are only stewards of the mystery it is christ that deserves glory even whilst he glorifies his bride then we are not careful let me tell you kenya listen to me africa listen to me there is nothing we have in ourselves to make any boast what you see is the election of grace and as we minister by the spirit we must be intentional about letting men see christ lifted through our ministration it is easy to want to draw the attention to yourself but we are mentoring a generation we are not only ministering we are correcting wrong approaches to ministry it is very easy to brag around and make it look like it is apostle joshua selman brothers and sisters hear me i am a man i'm a vessel empowered by the spirit the one who deserves the glory now and always is jesus the christ the son of the living god in the name of jesus i prophesy to you let captivity come to an end now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus my sister look at me shout jesus as loud as you can that's not a shout our daddy said to shout she's afraid jesus she doesn't even know why she's shaking in the name of jesus i curse that spirit it lets you go now and forever for all of you standing trusting god for the fruit of the womb in the name of jesus the anointing of the holy ghost is on you my dear out of her now in the name of jesus my dear look at me two of you i'm seeing an anointing coming upon you in the name of jesus be free i curse every devil out now in the mighty name of jesus christ and i declare by the spirit of the living god and according to the time of life return with your children in the name of jesus for all of you who have stood in for the fruit of the womb i decree and declare it doesn't matter whether i speak to you specifically you just believe oh this is your wife the man is drawing his wife and saying you can't you can't forget us what do you do sir um, i serve at uh, papa center i serve at papa center as oh. a protocol okay and i work uh, for a company doing uh, transport and logistics no i'm seeing you starting your own transport company there is a grace that is coming on you listen to me there is a grace that is coming upon you and i'm seeing you float your own transport don't ask where the money will come from that's that's no no mm -mm. if you will believe then you will see the glory of the lord i know you are here for the issue of fruit of the womb don't worry about that one god is prophesying something that will bless you i'm speaking to you by the spirit you will start your own company and the hand of god will rest upon you he will prosper you even in this land madam i stretch my hands and i declare that it is over in the name of jesus christ for all of you standing i pray with you and i agree that it is over forever in jesus name god bless you let's pray let's finish up our prayer for the sick in the name of jesus christ i declare by the spirit of the living god be healed right now shout amen be healed right now be healed right now be healed right now whether i mention your case or not by the power of the holy ghost be healed right now i'm telling you the anointing of the holy spirit is setting people free now this is what i want you to do why we celebrate jesus we have just five minutes for this there are people inside and outside check yourself now 
the moment you find out that the power of god has touched you i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain come and stand here a few pastors will confirm you and will take the case celebrate jesus god is doing mighty things here look at miracles happening my god look at miracles happening kenya are you celebrating jesus look at this there's a death here look at this the death has opened look at this give jesus praise give jesus praise set yourself look at the miracle that's happened here another miracle that's happened here check yourself in the name of jesus check yourself there's someone you could not walk with your left leg properly check yourself now life and power has come to your limbs please very quickly celebrate jesus kenya god is doing mighty things in this place hallelujah let me know when we are ready to just take a few just coordinate yourselves and then let's let's hear what god is doing here listen please look up miracles are not just a proof that a man is anointed i taught you yesterday we are witnesses a miracle is a reply over satan's assault from god through man to creation that i am still god are we together now Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, go ahead. She has been asthmatic from when she was a child. She came into this meeting with a lot of pain on her chest. And right now the pain is no Completely. more. Completely. Breathe healed. in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Look at this. Come on, Kenya. Come, my dear. In the name of Jesus, never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Ghost. She had a lamb in her breast. A lamb. A lamb on her breast. Okay. Yes, when she came to this meeting. Give her the mic. My dear, what happened to you now? Pardon? What happened to you now? I, I couldn't, uh, I used to feel pain here. But when you mentioned about uh, uh, someone who a has lump, a pain. Yes, yes. yes. I, I had what happened to you now? I can't feel pain. No pain, it's feel, gone. Yes, yes. Jesus. It's gone. Jesus. The power of God is still touching people. The Lord is showing me a woman you are an elderly woman. I don't know what challenge you have with your, your lumbar area. Something that has to do with your stability. Pain around your side. Check yourself now. The power of God has touched you. It's gone and gone forever. Gone and gone forever. My dear, in the name of Jesus, be healed completely. Mommy, I could not be able to lift this particular hand. She couldn't lift this hand. But right now, she can lift it. Ah, come on now, Kenya. Look at this. You can even see the hand. Put it down, mommy. Put it down. Lift it up. Put it down. Lift it up. Put it down. Ah, give Jesus praise. She's what crying. Happened? Hold on. Hold on. Please come. My God. You can, you can see how twisted the hand. Pastor, you can see it. In the name of Jesus. Over now. Man of God, this lady has been deaf here she's been deaf and she has a report but she says let me ah. see the report look at this this is her report for how long how many for as long as i can remember oh, jesus. yes jesus hallelujah glory <laughs> majesty majesty man of god yes sir this gentleman here come my dear it never returns to you again in the name of jesus you are free now you are free forever in jesus name yes please man, this man went through he's a rape victim from his uncle he says he he's a rape victim oh rape God. victim he said he was about to go in for surgery in the coming week because of pains that never went away he said as he stood there the pain all went completely come I command that spirit hold my hands and that devil to leave you now and to leave you forever be free now and be free forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ 
be free forever in the name of Jesus. Man of God, man of God. This lady has been going through severe pain. Severe pain. From Monday. From Monday. Yes. When okay. she came into this meeting, the pain was still there. But as you were praying, the pain is gone. The anointing is on her. Look at me. The pain is gone. Look at me. Tap the lady for me. The pain is gone completely. I stretch my hands and I declare in the name of Jesus. Never returns to you. Never returns to you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Man of God, this lady had having numbness on her left side. Numbness on your left side. Yes, and some pain when she came to the meeting. As you were praying, the pain is gone and the numbness is Madame, no more. Run, run, go, run. Any pain, any pain. Do what I'm doing. Come on, Kenya, give Jesus praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus never returns to you again by the power of the holy ghost yes please man of god this lady has been experiencing back pains for the last two weeks so when you declared someone with a back pain back the pain, pain disappeared completely yes check yourself now bend down Good. up any pain Anything. completely yes. give jesus praise never returns to you again in the mighty name of jesus christ Man of God, she's had multiple lumps on her left breast. Multiple lumps. And Let her speak. Go ahead. Give her the mic. I have. I had. What's your name? My name is Mercy. Okay. Multiple lumps on my left breast. Even if you hug me tight, I'd feel a lot of pain. My God. But I can't feel. Completely. Totally. It's gone. There is a strong anointing on you, my dear. And in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to you. Let every door that stands closed before you, by the spirit of prophecy, I declare it open right now. In the name of Jesus, hold my hands. Do your best. Come. I release you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the old go. I open you to the new by the spirit of the living God. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God jesus the son of the living god jesus the son of the living god man of god let's take one or two more yes man of god, this woman came here into this meet with a lot of pain on her joints her she, joints she could not stand for long because of the pain but after the prayer the pain is no more she's Completely. healed check yourself my dear any pain she's smiling come hold my hands lovely people kenya is a wonderful place you smile a lot may god bless you i receive that anointing and I take it back to Nigeria in Jesus' name. We also smile. We're happy people. But I mean, you smile at another dimension. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, now, I don't know. We may not have the time. My God, time is, is, is gone. I know that we want to take some more testimonies. But I sincerely apologize. We'll have to stop. So I just do the impartation. Her Excellency is here. There are a number of people here. And we would not want to keep them for um, unusually long. But then you have your testimonies i'm sure that there should be a system where you get it across to the pastor and then you share the testimony here at the church or whatever assembly that you come from i want to do the impartation as we round up now this is where everyone must receive let's pray The Lord spoke to Moses and said, Thou shall anoint Joshua. And he anointed Joshua and he said, Thou shalt take some of your honor. Honor is transferable. You shall take some of your honor and you shall give to him. And the Bible said this, that Joshua was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses laid hands on him. Please listen to me. An impartation does not mean you are weak spiritually. An impartation is a privilege of the transference of dimensions, levels of the anointing. Every possibility in the kingdom is not only sponsored by the anointing, but sponsored by the level of the anointing. Please look up. Let me give an illustration. Uh, I think I have some money here. Look up, please. This is a $100 bill. Everybody, please look up now 
I don't know how much that translates to in your currency, but this is 10,000. Now look up, please. If you have a hundred dollar bill, how many of you know that this can grab you a very good meal? Amen. This can grab you many things, but this may not buy a car for you. Yet it is money. So if what you want is lunch, this is sufficient. But if what you want is something that is a house or a car, you will need more of this. It's not enough to be anointed. The extent of the anointing determines the extent of the possibilities. So, Apostle Peter is speaking in the house of Cornelius to the Gentile church. And he says it this way. Chapter 10 and verse 38 of Acts. How God anointed. Not just that Jesus was anointed. Look at the extent to which God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed of the devil and the Bible says for God was with him it is not enough to be anointed you must be anointed to the degree to which every condition that comes is within the jurisdiction of your anointing to solve listen you are not a blessing until you are anointed it is true as a man of God you must sustain the level of grace that is higher than every challenge your members will come with that way you become a blessing if out of hundred conditions you solve two you have failed even if the two testify and make a big deal out of it so meetings like this are systems of upgrade for some of you what you need is a greater level of the same anointing for some of you what you need is another dimension just because you carry the healing anointing does not mean the anointing for favor is upon you please understand the same key does not open every room but it's called a key just because you have the key to the kitchen does not mean you have the key to the restroom if what you want is food you are safe but if you want to use the restroom you will need keys the anointing is that way now watch this please i want to do the final impartation i apologize let me have four people gentlemen never forget this illustration for the rest of your life any four gentlemen just scatter yourselves around watch this this is how paul says it please stand here sir he said and god is able to make all grace everybody say all grace. all grace that means you can have some not all call this the grace for wealth and abundance call this the grace for favor and influence call this the grace for speed call this the spirit of wisdom for instance just because i have the grace for wealth and abundance does not mean i have favor the proof of favor is not money is the loyalty of men the heart of men is the proof that you are favored watch this i can be blessed financially i have a dimension of grace but when i need to make decisions because i lack this fortitude for wisdom it will show in my life so here's what the bible says God is able, all of you come to me, to make all grace, hold my hands, abound towards you, so that ye, having all sufficiency, the sufficiency is a product of this multifaceted dimension. So I, when my challenge, if I'm faced with a financial situation, I project the grace that solves it. If I'm faced with a situation of wisdom, there is a grace. Some of you have some graces, but there are dimensions. Your results show the deficiency of certain graces. So Paul says in Romans chapter 1 and the 10th verse, he says, I long to come to you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established i came before but now i come again because your stability is my concern are we together so that when we receive this it will be a profitable conference you can go you know the grace on your life by the possibilities that it that your destiny commands 
the testimonies that recycle around your life are a report card to the kind of grace that is upon you until what is upon your head changes what is around you will never change thou anointest my head with oil but the result shows in my cup he does not anoint my cup he anoints my head i use my cup to see what is on my head if what is on my head is overflowing the cup will be overflowing is someone ready to receive praise the lord bless you gentlemen thank you hallelujah now watch this i stand by the grace of god and i stand as one who has been privileged it's an honor to do this that i do for your nation and for africa it's an honor many of you here are great men and women of god veterans of the gospel i do not downplay your sacrifice with the holy spirit i understand the dimension that has been committed to you and i honor it with all my heart i only stand as one who has been graced by god to be a communicator of this spiritual mystery it is not a show of superiority by any means it is simply the privilege of god's grace granted unto us his apostles and prophets to be the dispensers of this spiritual reality but then that your heart be open to receive and then it will change your life i pray for you now in the name of jesus the anointing for revelation listen accurate understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom according to luke chapter one perfect understanding i release that grace take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now shout amen come on kenya take that grace now take that grace in the name of jesus take that grace in the name of jesus hear me man of god i release you to a new dimension of revelation insight into scripture in the name of jesus christ number two i pray for you paul said when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power so that your faith will not rest upon the wisdom of men sophia but the power of god i pray for you the dimension of spiritual possibilities that makes for signs wonders kamakato shalai i see that anointing coming on people take that grace now take that grace now receive that anointing in the name of jesus christ hear me the bible says because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness it says therefore god even thy god hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows i want to prophesy to you and jabez was more honorable than his brethren the grace that distinguishes you i release that anointing upon you I release that anointing upon you in government in business I set a mark of separation and I command the distinguishing of your life and destiny in the name of Jesus hear me the Bible says and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon please listen Kenya all blessings come from God through men to men nothing comes from God directly to men from God through men to men the distance between you and your next level is a helper of destiny hear me no helper of destiny comes on their own they are called by prophecy let me speak to Kenya I prophesy to the north to the south to the east and the west of Kenya every helper of your destiny between now and the end of 2019 i call them into your life now i call them into your ministry now please hear me let me speak over your finances 
there are three levels of wealth the first level of wealth is called transactional wealth this is the wealth that comes by providing value turning it into products and services and selling it with excellence to a targeted consumer base that's what you call business it is called transactional wealth where a reward is authorized for selling your value the second dimension of wealth is called transformational wealth wealth that comes by reason of the lives you have changed you provide value but you don't sell it you dispense it and the law of rewards makes that every time you dispense value whether it is sold or given for free a reward must be authorized to come to you for instance the reward a man of God receives for changing a man's life but the third dimension of wealth is called sovereign wealth wealth by prophecy wealth that comes by the finger of God and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet they were preserved he said believe in the Lord your God so shall you be established and believe in his prophets if you stand tonight to believe this word that I utter I tell you your finances will change like day and night I stand by the God of heaven the helper of men and the giver of all good things between now and the next 90 days can you hear me I speak by the Spirit of God like the ark of God in the house of Obed Edom I provoke abundance to you I provoke abundance to you I provoke a I provoke abundance to you hallelujah we're wrapping up let me pray for your spiritual life if our hope is only in this life we are of all men most miserable please listen to me God is looking for people who will be serious with him not just people who will use him there is a hunger and a passion and a fire that must never die in your life let me pray for your prayer life i don't know what took it down that the hunger the passion the zest in the name of jesus fire from heaven fall on your prayer life fire from heaven fall on your prayer life the grace to fast the grace to pray take that grace kenya take that grace kenya listen to me I pray for you for the grace for character that you can stand before a million dollars and if it violates your conviction you can walk away and not feel bad I decree there is a grace that teaches men to say no I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus Christ CEOs with character men of God with character business people with character career people with character every business represented here I provide wings in the spirit rise to a new dimension every church every assembly every mission agency represented here we are using pastor's church to speak over the church in kenya regardless of limitation i speak to the church in kenya by the privilege of the election of grace rise to a new dimension rise to a new level signs and wonders salvation fire apostolic kingdom driven teachings mentorship of believers in the name of jesus christ let's pray for the government of kenya it says to pray for the peace of jerusalem they shall prosper who love you we bless god her excellency is here standing to represent the government and the former vice president is here we honor you sir we use both of you as the witnesses to pray over kenya that in the name of jesus kenya hear the word of the lord rise to a new level economically rise to a new level we place the anointing upon your parliament we place the anointing 
upon your social economy we place the anointing upon education we place the anointing upon media we place the anointing upon family we place the anointing upon the religious circles hear me i declare by the spirit let the name of the lord be exalted over kenya the length the breadth of kenya is submerged under the influence of the spirit of grace finally i pray for every member every partner every financier and everyone who is part of this ministry and part of this vision the bible says a laborer is deserving of his wages i stand by god joining my faith with your pastor alongside all the men and women of god that have been used upon this platform we stand under this corporate grace and we pray for everyone who is part of this church and this vision rise from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory in the name of jesus we declare that the least among you will be as great as david by the power of the holy ghost let the sound of mourning and the sound of weeping not be heard within your vicinity again in the name of jesus christ pastor thank you so much mark chapter 16 Mark chapter 16. This is after the resurrection of Jesus. He's back to life and he's admonishing the disciples finally before his ascension. Verse 15. And he said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature just keep the scripture there he said to them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature the interesting thing about this scripture is he did not say go around he didn't say go towards he says go into now if if you are asked to go into a room if you are in that room you shouldn't be seen from where you were sent you should be in immersed in that system if i say go into the lounge i don't expect to see you here again please understand what i'm teaching he says to go into the world and then he says preach now it's very interesting he says preach it means you must find out what he's saying preach the gospel not to men to every creature that means the effect of your going should affect systems not just men preach the gospel the content of your message if it is true and if it's properly communicated must have an effect on both animate and inanimate things as a witness that it is the gospel the gospel was not only designed for men listen very carefully the bible says for god so loved the world not just men men being the zenith of his creation but not the only creation of his and the bible says creation was subject to vanity not men so the, the the liberty that would come is not just to men but to creation keep that scripture there so go ye he's giving an instruction he didn't say discuss he didn't say wait he didn't say deliberate he didn't say have some kind of um um political debate go ye enter the system when you are in the system he says preach ensure that everything within that system comes under the influence of your message are we together now 
Revelation chapter 11 please and verse 15 interestingly this is one of the core scriptures for our ministry and the seventh angel sounded and there were voices in heaven help me Kenya saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever so now we're talking kingdoms we're talking territories are we together now Jesus is giving us an instruction and he's saying to enter a system to familiarize yourself with that system and provide a compelling dimension of power over that system bring the system under the influence of your message now what we have largely done and that is profitable what we have largely done as the body of Christ is to go around and seek to propose the gospel of salvation to men in hope that they will open up their hearts and receive the life of God now, that is powerful and for many years we bless the Lord for all of the missionaries who have come from the US who have come from Europe you know and brought this great gospel we are recipients of that sacrifice many of them died in Africa their graves continue to stand as a memorial that they spent their lives and gave their all for the gospel but then we continue to see that there is still trouble because something about our not understanding the instruction of Jesus is not revealing the fullness of his life and his power because he didn't say to go around and talk to men he says to enter a system that meant that we needed to understand the entire scope of the gospel the gospel is very i'm starting very carefully tonight because there's something i want to introduce the gospel has only been received especially in africa as a message that saves and that is very powerful that is very true but that is incomplete there are two dimensions to the gospel the first dimension is the message that saves the message that saves is the revelation of the love of the father the bible declares revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus the son are we together our receiving that gospel will culminate to having what the bible calls the way the life of god this is the gospel of salvation are we together but there is a second dimension to the gospel the gospel as an ideology the gospel as a mind control system the gospel as an instrument for territorial dominion this is the dimension that has seldom been understood and taught so the limit of the gospel for the average african is the impact of the power of god in his heart and that is wonderful but our system and our territories are yet to testify that the reality of this salvation has come twofold one the message that saves and the jurisdiction of that message is the heart of the recipient that once you receive my receiving the gospel my receiving Jesus Christ will not give you salvation it is personal are we together now I can share it by proposing the same gospel but you must believe are we together now but then there is the part of the gospel that we can extend towards a territory the ideology there is the gospel does not stop as a message that saves the gospel extends as an ideology that institutionalizes God within a territory now please listen you have to understand this this apostolic dimension of Christianity has largely not been understood in Africa so we have many Christians sincere Christians well-meaning believers who love God 
but the territory refuses to bow to the lordship of christ and right now darkness continues to loom around the horizon of africa there have been many pharaohs who have arisen that do not know joseph neither do they have regard for the god of joseph and if we do not balance up our understanding of the gospel and our communication of the same, we are not just going to lose money. That's a little issue. We are not just going to lose positions. We are going to lose a generation. The side effect, the effect of not understanding this truth is that we are going to lose more than material things. We are going to lose more than reputation. A generation is at stake. The ideology of the gospel the mind control system of the gospel that means that the effect of the gospel should transcend and move beyond my personal encounter I should bring a territory under the influence of that gospel are we together yes The most uneducated person in Kenya knows Coca-Cola. He didn't have to go to school to know it. The influence of Coca-Cola reached the village and although it's not a software, it is something that is hard and real. They superimpose the influence of that ideology. You would frown and fight any wedding that does not have it represented. <laughs> Literally. You will fight and frown at any, it doesn't matter. Even if people choose to go organic, you will still give them the option there. When Coca-Cola is finished in a store, you will not get a substitute. You will leave and go somewhere else and look for where it is. Now that exactly, listen carefully, they have done something to your mind. When your phone is missing, your mind is disturbed until you find it or buy another one. Remember, the phone may not necessarily talk to you. They have connected you to the ideology of that communication. You will literally lose your life and your peace because a little metallic object is outside of your influence. Please understand what I teach. Your car can be stolen and you can get sad, contact the police and say, by God's grace but this little object on your hand even if it is missing you are restless you will call it such bend look how far look the look at the skills that you employ in order to restore that object now please I'm going somewhere and I want us to understand this as heavy as it is it has become an instrument of pride you hold it with joy what would have been an embarrassment years ago you hold it with joy it is proof for many of wealth it is proof for many of affluence it is proof for many of enlightenment it is proof for many of being um, part of the realities of a generation i'm just giving an example with that phone when your data is over you are restless you have to find a way of renewing when your credit is finished you will move left right do every kind of thing to put it there now listen to me the gospel was designed to work like that if we have to depend on evangelical meetings alone to save men men will not be saved I'm trying to be as modest as I can be because um, because of what I want to tell you. The strategy for kingdom advance, in fact, the concept of kingdom has hardly been understood by church. Please listen carefully. We have written books. We have brought together Bible colleges. We have taught everything from character, which is profitable, the fear of God, ethics of ministry, um, and all kinds of principles of theological exegesis. We understand scripture. We have stretched our intellect from border to border, covered different dimensions, different curriculums, but we have missed the kingdom. 
and so we have all kinds of people who stand like i taught in the morning as witnesses advocates of the interests of the father and they hardly understand his agenda we have founded churches upon this mistake we have founded conferences upon this mistake we have founded bible schools upon this mistake now this mistake has nothing to do with being good or bad it is the limitation of our understanding this is why god is putting conferences like this are we together now and so we have a people who are very zealous we have people who love god people who can die for him but isn't it amazing that with all the churches we continue to have in africa and i'm speaking from a standpoint of love we continue to have churches and branches and our territory has no witness that god is within this place it means something must be edited about our spiritual understanding something must be under edited about our approach to kingdom advance the average teenager today in our world and in africa has an outspoken resentment for spiritual things are you isn't it amazing that regardless of cultural barrier the effect is still the same that means someone is winning while we lose and we need to return back to understand the ways of god there is jesus the way the methodology we have to learn his ways the bible says in jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 to stand in the ancient path and to ask the ancient path is not the path of a denomination the ancient path is god's original strategy are we together now yes and so the concept of church has almost become something that is just a religious experience for many i am going to church what does that mean ask an average believer to explain what he just said and you will be surprised how confused he is and that person is going to be the preacher what does it mean i am going to church i'm challenging you for a reason I am going to church okay what does that mean what should i experience well i'm going to sing i'm going to worship i will hear the word of god and then leave to what end then they say join me go to the church you say i i don't have a problem going but what am i going to do there say just keep going it will help you and prepare you for heaven what does that mean the frustration that we have in our christian experience is proof that something about the ways of god is not understood and you see there are alternatives now this is what makes it dangerous there are alternatives now alternatives that seem to resonate to the frustrations of the average christian and if we do not do anything about it a time will come let me tell you our pews will not only be empty but history will judge us for not handling this baton well and passing it well i came tonight to open your eyes to a very deep mystery to open your eyes to something that is going on that we are not seeing the ideology of the kingdom the average believer knows nothing about kingdom the average believer knows nothing about kingdom advance it's unfortunate that sometimes even we great men and women of god that love jesus with all our hearts we have all kinds of ideas but the accurate understanding of the strategy allocated for kingdom advance and the strategy that captures a generation for christ is not known we have all kinds of ideas on how it will happen we talk a lot about revival and i believe it i'm a student of revival and i have been used by god here and there to plant those seeds of revival it's an honor he's granted me but i submit to you we don't know what we are saying it is true it's an uncomfortable truth but it is true our results show it we don't know it we have to submit ourselves to the rabbi of the ages we have to in to ask the holy spirit not to come and join us but to lead us because we something is wrong with our understanding spirit of the living god we are not asking you to come and join us in our confusion but to come to clear the air because there is an army that must rise with understanding are we blessed 
let's talk a bit about kingdom advance is that all right and then we'll pray what does it mean to advance the kingdom the bible says that the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our god and we his christ and he says that we shall reign forever and ever and so what what we have to understand the concept of kingdom advance please write if you're writing let's just do a little bible study king and every scriptural method any and every scriptural method deployed any and every scriptural method deployed to enthrone Christ and his purposes in the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities I believe there will be provision to get the tapes any and every scriptural strategy deployed to enthrone Christ and his purposes first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities this is what we call kingdom advance kingdom advance is not about preaching it's not about singing it's not about doing business we are at liberty within the coordinates of scripture to invent through creativity any strategy at all that can lead to the enthroning of the christ across the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities listen to me whoever is not doing this today on earth is wasting god's time the deploying the coordinate scripture is our boundary as believers so we are we are given the liberty to walk within the coordinates of scripture and through the ministry of the holy spirit our partnership with him to come up with the various ways are we together now that we can deploy a mind control system that culminates to enthroning christ first in the hearts of men you call it salvation you call it new birth but then across every strata of human activity so when the comedian our dear brother was talking and when the other one was talking and when the woman of god was worshiping in god's mind it is the same he is not interested in the unique method he is interested in the motivation and the power that sponsors it now if you do not understand this we will lose a generation <laughs> the deploying of any and every scriptural strategy scriptural provided is within the coordinates of the word to institutionalize God in the hearts of men and to spread his influence across every strata of human activities this is kingdom advance if that can happen through a church service then the church service is advancing God's kingdom if that can happen through giving birth then giving birth has now become a ministry if that can happen through singing then the singing has become a kingdom advancement strategy if that happens through business then the business so it is not what we do that there is a central motivation that behind everything i do behind the creativity and the excellence and the skill all of the labor is geared towards one goal to see that christ and his purposes are we together now are first planted in the hearts of men and then the influence spreads across what you call the seven mountains please listen to me very carefully we must educate a generation to know why we do what we do not just that we do it kingdom advance every church worker should know this 
so while you are ushering people in and someone says i'm not interested again your insistence to have him come is not just to gain more membership for a church you are motivated by a higher desire that this man may lose an opportunity to understand something about the kingdom that becomes your basis of doing what you do very well when you prepare and you excel as you minister you are not just motivated by a desire to be famous that will come but the agenda is bigger than fame is too small a reason for god to invest such grace on you now listen very carefully the bible talks about two women in scripture called one called hannah and the other called penina are we together now the bible says that hannah could not have a child yes Penina had children and penina continued to communicate what looked like mockery over hannah notice that hannah continued to go to god and cry for help but her prayer was not answered because there was no kingdom in it god could not find a space in her desire where christ will be glorified and his purposes now hannah paraphrasing now went back this time around and said lord i know what you are looking for you a body you need bodies that represent your purposes can my womb have the honor of bringing one of the bodies she prayed once only once listen I have learned from scripture and by experience that the key to getting God's attention is not rolling on the ground. It is the degree to which your life aligns to kingdom come. More than fasting, more than prayer, more than Bible study, the key that causes God to invest his jealousy upon a man and stay there until you rise is the degree to which his kingdom can come through you listen very carefully i have seen that it is not difficult for god to lift the people it is not difficult for god to lift an individual the only issue is what there is nothing kingdom that is represented in our desires it is within his power to make rich it is within his power to grant a man influence it is within his power to cause a nation and a generation to hear you but to what degree will his purposes be represented in your pursuit the difficulty in our christian experience is 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 a misrepresentation of god's potential it looks like god is slack it looks like god is slow but the key is that god is vetting the purity of our desires until he finds himself there you are not going to get his attention you may cry god is touched with the feelings of your infirmity but he's only moved when he finds himself in your agenda for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory i will do Just to see you, to behold you as my King. Wanna be where you are. Gotta be where you are. Wanna be where you are. Gotta be where you are. Listen. Surrendering your heart is not the key to salvation. Believing the gospel and receiving his life is the key to salvation. But surrendering your life is the key to be used by God. Please understand this. The condition to be saved is not to give your heart to the Lord. It is to receive his life but when it has to do with doing business with god within the context of a generation the price is death i have said it again and again that the price for all of god is all of you 
until all of you, not your money, leave your money, leave your car, leave your skill, leave your talent. No. Until you die. It's a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It's a mystery. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And this life today that I live in the body, I live by the faith. I am motivated by another reality. I have lost touch of my ambitions and my desires. I have brought everything under. Like a woman submitting to her husband, I have become a bride and a bride indeed. His desire has become my obsession. I do not seek anything for myself. My desire is for him to be glorified. John 17 and verse 1, Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven to pray. And he made a statement that was very interesting. He says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify now thy son, that thy son. That's the formula. That's the formula. That if I be lifted from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. And because they cannot see me, they will see you who is the object of the sacrifice. But when they come to you, you are smart enough like an usher to redirect them. Are we together now? Pastor and his wife acted my message so beautifully here when pastor ushered his wife gave her an opportunity to share a few things and she turned back and beautifully honored him i said this woman understands kingdom because you see in theology we call it the reflection principle nobody can glorify himself your glory is invested in another and the excellence of what comes out of you is how you are glorified are we together now so the father cannot glorify himself his glory comes from the son the son cannot glorify himself his glory comes from the church in partnership with the holy spirit the church cannot glorify itself the glory of the church comes from his dominion over principalities and powers and creation it's a principle of shared dominion it is the son that glorifies the father it is the church that glorifies the ecclesia that glorifies the son and it is the dominion of the church over creation that is where the glory of the church is so it is important for us to understand that this call to the faith life that we call christianity is not a journey unto pain and frustration in hope that we'll hear the sound of a trumpet one day that is that is a very well-meaning but destructive ideology it is the kind of ideology that has produced the social economy that we see in africa is the kind of ideology that has been responsible for the prevailing power of darkness are we together very very important and so we must understand therefore that we are not fully carrying out what we call the great commission just because men are getting saved that is one side of the victory but is being cancelled out by the loss of the darkness that looms over a territory there are two keys to kingdom advancement write them down please number one is called evangelism number two is called influence there are two biblical keys that make for kingdom advance number one is called evangelism number two is called influence micah chapter four please evangelism is very important we know that we have been greatly mentored we know how to stretch ourselves from border to border but here is the other dimension it says but in the last days Kabu shale kapo siyata, the mountain so the house of the lord is a mountain on its own and the bible says it shall be established at the top of other mountains and it shall be exalted above all the hills look at all look at the way this scripture messes with your intelligence do you flow to a mountain can a mountain be placed on other mountains hmm. 
verse 2 and how many nations many nations shall come when you want to understand this you must study solomon solomon was a man who demonstrated the power of the influence of the kingdom on the excellency of the understanding hearts that he carried solomon compelled the attention of all the kings that were within his sphere but there was a strange woman from ethiopia who would not come because gentiles don't come they come to your light but kings don't come to your light they keep watching they have light too they have results kings come only to the brightness of your rising please follow me we have something we have a serious journey to take tonight Sheba continued to hear of the hand of God upon Solomon but it was not compelling enough for her to come she kept watching the same way they are watching you and a time came when Sheba herself had to come and she came with her plenty and the Bible tells us theologically speaking for over six months she continued to tour the palace of Solomon and at the end of it the Bible says she said half of this was not told me she had no breath in her every generation will not be confused there is a generation that will get this thing yes sir I'm going to show you that generation because whoever that generation is we know that they are a chosen people they are a kingdom of priests a peculiar people a holy nation the Bible says that generation you will know that generation by the signature of a body of knowledge they will access called marvelous light you know that this is a generation signified by prophecy by the depth and the degree of spiritual illumination that they have access to the bible calls it marvelous light are we together if we are together please say amen, amen. yes so here we see that kingdom advance is more than just evangelism we will need influence let me talk a bit about influence and i begin to tie some things what is influence influence is the ability to cause a person and a territory to buy into your convictions without using force or cruelty it's called influence the ability to compel men to compel systems to buy into your ideology without using force or cruelty is called influence that means if i sustain an ability to work on your understanding and i compel you to buy into my beliefs to buy into my convictions without jeopardizing your power to choose it is called influence it is a key to kingdom advance it is the key that compels territories to call upon the name of the lord we have done well in evangelism but we must understand the principles that make for influence otherwise a generation will come where god will mean anything are we blessed influence the degree to which I make you believe the degree to which I make you buy into my convictions now listen to me the world operates on mind control systems please write it down mind control systems the world the cosmos operates on mind control systems that means at every given point within a territory there are shapers of a territory's understanding everything about kenya and everything about africa is a proposition that came from someone and was received are we together now watch this satan comes i mean the bible says that god comes in the cool of the day are we together and he says adam where are thou and adam said i heard your voice but i hid because i was naked the next question who told you you have accessed another source of information 
someone has mediated between me and you we call it media now listen very carefully a system of mediation has come between me and you to communicate something that did not come from me who told you what is the source of that information because clearly you are now under the influence of that information consistently we are immersed in all kinds of informations clamoring for our our connection our emotions now listen very carefully it is why advertisement is powerful business people will tell you they spend millions of dollars for a two three minutes advert what are they seeking to do it's a system a mind control system the end of it is to produce an addiction that may be greater than your own control when that happens you have come under the influence of whatever information it is are we together now yeah somebody told you that corruption is profitable you believed it generally i'm speaking not just to you i'm speaking apostolically you received it you taught the children and now it has become an institution someone else taught that being serious with god is equivalent to failing in life you believed it you received it and it's now become the frame of your belief system listen to me the bible says receiving the end of your faith first peter chapter 1 and verse 9 even the salvation of your soul the end the culmination of your faith is not just the salvation of your spirit the reality that has happened to your spirit man must flow over to the realm of your mind there must be a correction here's how the bible puts it philippians chapter 2 paul is speaking to the church in philippi and he starts from verse 5 he says permit this mind to be in you the word let there means permit to permit this mind there was a frame of understanding that made the holy spirit comfortable on jesus remember that at age 12 when his colleagues were there playing around a teenager should not be in the temple learning anything at age 12 but jesus knew that although he was god now he had come in the flesh he needed to submit himself because his mind would play a role and he submitted himself to learn the principles and then for 18 years we do not hear anything about jesus again from age 12 scripture is silent the next time we see him he's 30 years coming to be baptized by jordan and then the heavens open the spirit of god descends upon him and the father says this is my beloved son question what was he before this is now my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and he compels creation to hear him hear ye him and now Paul is teaching us that Jesus was not just Jesus because he was the son of God that he was able to work on his belief systems to sustain an understanding that made him the logos in experience that the father was comfortable to walk through him because his mindset never fought one agenda of God on earth and Paul is saying permit this mind to be in you which was also there was a mental disposition that Jesus possessed that allowed the Holy Spirit to be comfortable listen impartations are useless when the belief system has not changed we love impartation Africa and impartation is very important but impartation you see the oil will always take the shape of the vessel if the vessel is small it will make the oil look small when the prophet was sp speaking with the woman and she said there is nothing except the oil was hearing the conversation and say you call me small no you limited me in a small vessel and the prophet said go and borrow vessels i know what the problem is don't borrow oil but borrow vessels expand when you expand now the oil will begin to look like the shape and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped listen to me 
two people can carry the same anointing but their mindsets for instance and respectfully so church history in africa would tell you many anointings that we carry today did not start from us they were anointings that came with our fathers and the patriarchs of faith but either because the men were not educated or they did not have the requisite level of spiritual enlightenment that will allow that dimension of god find expression the anointings on them that we now carry and look great it was always on them but their mindset made it small their mindset made it to look ineffective now God worked on us and expanded our understanding and the same grace now is on us and watch the potential of that anointing mind control systems a territory can be under siege mindsets and strongholds a mindset is a sustained thinking pattern a mindset is a perspective a mindset is a viewpoint this is very important our beliefs in Africa need to be edited from the lens of scripture not the lens of westernization not the lens uh -uh, uh -uh. the coordinates of growth is scripture for a believer and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation the boundary of our growth is limited to scripture because there is a way that seemeth right unto a man the bible says but the end thereof are the ways of death so we cannot randomly open up ourselves to just any information no truth does not just bless until it is sequentially arranged truth is like a house you don't put zinc after a foundation and call it house although zinc is required the pattern of building is important there is listen I, I, am i am i uh, now watch this watch this watch this please let me have two gentlemen any two not the ministers not yes any two of you please come let's celebrate them please come stand you stand here you stand here watch this now this brother is born again and is under the influence and the mentorship of pastor a everybody please look up and this brother is born again and under the mentorship and influence of pastor b are we together now now this man is properly mentored and taught the ways of the kingdom and his christian experience comes as a report card that he's been properly trained this one is randomly trained in truth but not truth that is coordinated and his christian experience is full of gaps and situations that defy explanation now listen very very carefully there is something you should know about god before you are taught prosperity if you are not taught that and you are taught prosperity it will destroy you sit down there is something about god you must know it is not just any truth the truths have a sequence to build you well so if i get born again and my first message are we together this is what has been happening in africa just because it is truth does not mean it is a blessing uh -uh. that's why you must be guided the holy ghost comes to guide us oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kalipa hashiata truth has killed many people they held on to it and it killed them this man has not been taught the reality of the victory of Christ he's not been taught the attacks that influence brings he's not been taught that the cosmos has an adversary he's not been taught that every open door has an adversary he's not been trained teaching him about growth and influence will kill him he does not have the spiritual stamina to survive this are you getting what I'm saying now this man is now learning about prosperity but he has not been taught death to the flesh he's not been taught the lordship of christ and so his first one million dollars the man is confused why because the old man is still alive 
he's not been cultured to see that everything god gives you you are a steward he's not been taught that in this kingdom owners are rebels we don't own things in this kingdom mm -mm. Oh my sit down sit down please ownership is proof of rebellion in this kingdom we are stewards we don't own things and moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful so if god trusts me with 10 million dollars a hundred million dollars the revelation of stewardship has fortified me from lost listen to me this is an apostolic conference and there are many things that we need to bring under divine order that was the goal of writing the first and second corinthians that all things be done decently and in order are we together now yes so imagine respectfully that this man now becomes a pastor of a church look at the the depth of deficiency that this man has now remember please i'm not i hope you understand the standpoint from which i'm coming i'm sent to the body and i love the body the goal is never to tear down no i don't destroy the body you will never hear me say any it is the body that i am part of the hallmark of the apostolic ministry is not just signs and wonders it is the ability to capture the speakings of the spirit within a season and to articulate it to a generation so that when men understand they will be able to run the speakings of god through his holy apostles and prophets are like ladders they are like a compass that can bring men back to the boundaries of his grace and power and wisdom this is what we are doing so this man is confused about so many things he's not sure of but now he finds himself as a pastor and he has to teach from the lens of his belief system now watch what will happen to the members because the members will be a reproduction of his mistakes and the mistakes will continue to multiply so you can literally without blinking your eye just look and see the imbalances scattered all over africa which are a product of the lack of the sequential arrangement of truth now you don't have to be fake to be in error you don't have to be fake to be wrong you just have to be imbalanced come he says and i will show you the lamb's wife and he showed me a city that was equal in length equal in breadth equal in height no exaggeration that's the lamb's wife anything that is outside of that coordinate is not the lamb's wife it is for this cause that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers right like carpenters to mature the saints so that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry if we do not correct this there is going to be trouble now remember respectfully speaking this guy suffered in his upbringing so don't blame him he's gone through hardship the first of ten children suffered labored himself why should he not believe in prosperity why should he not there is nothing wrong with it except that his emotional connection to his past and his pain has created a belief system that if not deconstructed and rearranged will be the emphasis of his teaching in ministry are we together yes it is not enough to have truth they must be arranged sequentially then everything that comes from god to us becomes profitable both to us there are people the worst thing that happened to them is that they became anointed because the background trainings and equippings that should sustain them and sustain the oil was not there and so when they were anointed it made them arrogant and impatient they would not honor people like our fathers like this and say we are all anointed it's not their fault they are not fake they are not wrong it's a deficiency of the balance the patterns a deviation from god's patterns There are people who teach that when we come to church 
we only come to see God you are right but you are wrong God sought for a man and remained helpless until a man came how dare you think all we come to see is just God if you say that as describing God's sovereignty you are right but you say that as describing kingdom advance God is helplessly in love with men he's limited himself that much without a man he remains handicapped as though he were not God he chose it so he says what is man that thou art mindful of Lord you would you would you would leave man because of his rebellion and turn back from heaven like a man pursuing a woman seeking her hand in marriage God is not ashamed to show his vulnerability towards man he will still come back I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness the most important thing is God not men you are wrong you are right but you are wrong you can sit on a wheelchair for long although there are men but one man will come into that building and without raising any song people are standing from the wheelchair what was the difference remember God was there you invited him right from the beginning of the service so what changed not God a man From the beginning of the service we say lord you are welcome this is your service and yet burdens are still hanging on people as if satan did not hear what was being said and suddenly a man holds the mic and in a moment in a twinkling of an eye what was an age-long captivity leaves that was not just god that was man the holy ghost had to look for a woman to agree for jesus to come he would have remained in heaven there a woman said be it unto me i allow i allow that the christ would find expression listen to me i would always give this example god was done with saul pastor david was the next person but a man stood in between called samuel and refused and because one man refused david remained in the wilderness it was not the will of God it was the will of man Samuel refused to go and anoint David David kept seeing visions of the throne and remained in the wilderness there God had agreed but man refused and God had to come to the man and say please how long will you weep seeing that I've rejected Saul as king can you take your horn God I thought God would say are there many men on earth <clears throat> You are the only one who behaves like that wow. god does not reject men he's unashamed about the value of men please don't feel insulted i love you with all my heart i stretch you for a reason please sit down it is the reason why we didn't get jobs what is there he's a ceo so what ask vashti she made that mistake and forgot she was only queen because she married a man who had influence over 127 provinces there are men in this earth that you cannot cast god must make them to fall in love with you for you to pass not everybody is castable i teach you the intelligence of living in the cosmos when a man's ways pleases the lord is it in your bible he makes there are some enemies you cannot cast they must be at peace with you they are gatekeepers this is where many believers continue to act foolishly in the system he says to be wise as serpents he's teaching you how to live in the cosmos and he's saying don't be like the serpent but there is something about the intelligence of the serpent that will be needed for your journey study hmm. are we together so for us to be able to communicate the dimension of influence that will enthrone christ in kenya and africa listen to me it will take more than desire it will take more than um just church services rejoicing 
it will take conferences like this that communicate all of the dimensions the apostolic intelligence that must come to the saints i submit to you pastor many believers are ignorant about the cosmos we do not understand the cosmos we know god but we do not know men and we do not understand his systems psalm 82 and verse 5 thank you sir thank you sir psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and the bible says all the foundations of the earth are out of course he's speaking about god's people verse 6 i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high the tragedy is in verse 7 but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes although it is in your destiny to walk in the God class but you're not sustaining the intelligence of dealing in the cosmos will cost you and bring you down to become like mere men there are believers who have rejected prosperity because they did not understand it or because of the imbalances around it and they have rejected it as though it's not important and they are paying for it right now there are churches paying for it there are individuals paying for it there are people today who cannot get jobs because they do not understand the cosmos and the system that will help believers to make progress on that wise please listen to me believers if we must see the glory and the power and the grace of god find expression within our territory it is important to not only know god we must understand his ways everybody say his ways the bible says he made known his ways to moses his acts yes hallelujah africa it's like someone in ICU right now. And there needs to be men and women who will rise with a passion for God and sufficient spiritual understanding of not just God, but his ways. So that we will be able to initiate the transformation um, that not only benefits Christians, but benefits every territory. If all we bring benefits Christians alone, then we are not a blessing i hope you know that because he sends his reign to the godly and even the ungodly there must be a dimension of that which we do that will bless all and sundry this has been my contemplation for many years that something is wrong with our theology something is wrong with our communication and Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, and in many circles almost every day, we continue to advocate this error. It's becoming institutional and there is need for a retreat fast. There is need for a reorientation. An understanding so that our children will know the God that we so love and call upon otherwise there will be a serious problem within the years that come hallelujah matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. let me just touch on an aspect and then we will pray and i will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven jesus is talking about something called the keys of the kingdom please look up the keys of the kingdom a key stands for access are we together now and he's saying i would grant you access in fact the bible puts it in chapter 13 matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus was speaking in one of his training sessions and he says because it has been given to you everybody say it has been given to me one more time say it has been given to me to know the mysteries of the kingdom 
the mysteries of the kingdom the word know there is the same word that is used like a man knowing his wife it does not just mean awareness it's an intercourse with these mysteries the mysteries of heaven he says these are the secrets by which the saints reign in light they are called the mysteries it's a body of truth allocated that when the saints find it the result is dominion the result is influence when you find this body of truth allocated for the victory of the saints then you will arise like isaiah chapter 60 and shine for your light is come amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light arise shine arise shine why because your light is come not because your light is there believers hear me we're talking about commanding the kind of influence and dominion that enthrones christ we're talking about a day when the only songs that will be able to hear on our streets are songs that glorify jesus and it would not happen by fighting it will happen by influence you cannot I was told a little about um, the, the comedian that came here and I was honored and I mean the followership and all of that and for this man to name the name of Christ this is influence now imagine with me if Michael Jackson ever said Jesus is Lord even by mistake there would be more harvest from that mistake than many many crusades put together Listen to what I tell you. This is a very serious discussion. I hope you know that mind control systems are not only information, they are men. Because at every point, every territory has the gatekeepers. Every industry has gatekeepers. And they have submitted their understanding to these men. It's not something, we, whether you like it or not, it's a reality. There is a way one man can dress and make one million people follow in 21 in 24 hours there is a way one woman can speak and cause people to speak that way you can introduce a slang and in 24 hours it's gone viral people are that helpless and if we understand this we will also know how easy it is to enthrone christ listen our messages will not be heard in this generation until we put a crown on it it is only what carries dominion that speaks to this generation so as powerful as our message is nobody will listen to you having two people alone talking to you following you people want to see a dimension of results they want to see a dimension of the life and the power of god like i taught in the morning they want to see an evidence and they will follow you the bible says in micah chapter 4 and verse 2 that all nations will say come let us go to the mount of the lord we is listen we have to be tired of begging people to come a time will come when they will run and come to us Come, let us go it's an advice come let us go the bible says it beautifully in, in, in verse 3 of chapter 60 isaiah it says gentiles shall come to your light not to you and their kings to the brightness of your rising it says that your gates will continually be open it will not be shut day or night to receive the forces of the gentiles listen let me tell you a generation is coming that it will be an honor for kings to hold us it, it will not be us loitering around houses of parliament trying to look for a say there is a dimension of kingdom power and wisdom that will submit it will cause territories to submit to the name of the lord I know it will happen in my lifetime yes sir. yes sir I know it will happen we will wear the devil out and let him know when Jesus said it is finished he meant it mm. a day will come when if you don't sell Christian music you will go down listen 
and it has nothing to do with sentiments because that is the only music that can excel that is the only music. i mean it will be proven scientifically to be therapeutic and so it will now be recommended at a social platform not a religious platform as a health recommendation this is not just church this is kingdom today when you say you are a pastor people just look at you this is what they heard i am a stupid confused wicked manipulator so people just look for names and say i'm just a worker in the house of god when has being a pastor and a man of god become such an insult my god some people from this conference are changing it that name ikabod must depart from church A day will come when if you stand for a job and you say, I'm a Christian. I saw you at Ruach conference. Yes, you have the job. Because that automatically means that you have been submerged under a thorough system of kingdom mentorship. You have become an advantage to that cooperation. This is kingdom. Please listen to me. Hmm. A time will come when once again, visitors will come to our homes and our children will greet them not come and slap them because of what they watched on tv they can stand and say good morning sir and say where did you learn that he said that's all i have known i've been taught a day will come when christians will begin to introduce new courses in our school curriculum thank god for that which the government demands but we are also there is a government that we are running and there are things our children must learn huh. are we together yes a time will come when individuals and churches will build cities now I, I i mean this seriously cities we tell the government we love you and we appreciate your effort but the bible calls us light it's not a proverb let's prove it give us space and within months we have created what looks like christ where is a scripture that opens the gate to the estate mm. it is not an estate for christians but it's an estate that honors christ and because the creativity came from him his signature must be there listen let me tell you this my brothers and my sisters what god is doing in africa in the midst of the confusion in the midst of the decadence there is an emergence there is an emergence of men and women of power it is not an emergence of preachers it's an emergence of witnesses it's an emergence of ambassadors it's an emergence of promoters and defenders of the interests of jesus now listen to me you have been taught the seven mountains there are no eight mountains they're literally are seven mountains they define the jurisdiction of the mind control systems every information and every influence on earth today comes from these systems the mountain of religion where the spiritual convictions of men and women are shaped something about god came from that mountain an error about god about satan about life came from that mountain and god must have himself witnesses on that mountain men and women who will be able to stand to accurately communicate the things of god a time will come where people will come to church by 3 a.m waiting for a service of 6 p.m not just because of miracles signs and wonders but the opening of our mouth will be the liberation of destinies we are not listen we are not we are not only going to teach like noise makers who are teaching spiritual things no we will teach and people will log on in their offices because what we teach has socioeconomic value the mountain of education the shapers and the molders of mindsets right now 
we have many teachers you talk to your child and say daddy that's wrong who told you auntie who is auntie the one who has more time for me while you are around looking for money the one who has replaced you in my life who has shaped my understanding and if that auntie or that uncle does not subscribe to the government of christ your child is in trouble he will ask you a question one day that you will not be able to sleep daddy what is this and you say who, who taught you that say i know more i can tell just sit down and let's have a conversation my auntie says it my uncle says it but how about a school where the teachers have vigil before resumption how about a school where we pray for the students before we start and they produce hundred percent in all of their exams how about a professor who can prophesy and have word of knowledge listen this is not just an entertainment it will happen the mouth of the Lord has spoken it the mountain of family life in the name of Jesus our homes will not be in ruin let me tell you we are the generation that will preserve our children will serve the God of their parents no there is no child following another God no you will serve the God of your father the God of your mother a time will come your child will say daddy do you know the first expression of God was supposed to be seen in daddy and mommy because man and woman are two dimensions of God and marriage is the system that helps children to learn God at the most basic level a woman is a type of the dimension of God a man is a type of the dimension of God when a child grows without a father the effect is seen in society when a child grows without a mother the effect is seen in society we will change the statistics that they tell us about marriage we are coming how about media in five minutes you can hear something that will take one year to leave you that's how powerful it is five minutes and information is introduced to your Christian experience introduced to your financial understanding that becomes a ladder upon which darkness rides in we need some sanity but when we are poor and broke we'll be at the mercy of any system in the name of jesus hear me a day will come like our dear brother said we are not only going to have television station we will have satellites son of man what seest thou a flying scroll the power of technology in advancing the gospel the prophet saw satellite but he could not call it so he called it a scroll that flies carrying a message across the horizon it will happen by the spirit of the living God the mountain of politics and governance imagine the rigorous training of Daniel only for him to be a politician Daniel's training you would think he was going to become an apostle imagine the training of Esther the book of Esther is the power of government there was no prophet in the book of Esther there was no man in the book of Esther the only defender of God was a woman in the place of politics her man had signed the death sentence of God's people and a woman used her influence honored her way to the throne and changed the policy are we blessed yes sir these are real mountains the mountain of arts and entertainment were you not taught that when you win you you break you bust champagne and pour it on your head you watch someone do it and because the person is not a failure you can't say he failed listen to me we are going to redefine how to celebrate success when the world becomes successful they honor champagnes and the rest but we will be so successful and tell the world look on us and when they look at us we say this is how we celebrate success in the kingdom and they say what does this mean it is a position of victory no but i thought you are the doer no a man can receive nothing except it is given to him we will mentor nations to know that god is the one who deserves the praise from any life this is true 
and this we will do and the one mountain that controls them the mountain of business the mountain of finance the mountain supervised by satan himself tyre and sidon were the business hubs of the then world and satan himself called the king of tyre he sits on that mountain himself the greatest attack in your life will not come just in your spiritual life the first temptation will come over the issue of your belly when you overcome it the next will come over your spiritual life fall down from that holy mountain and the third temptation is where satan himself will say the systems have been given to me listen to me let me tell you this babylon is raging attempting to ensure that you cannot prosper calling the name of the lord darius the king built 90 feet gold and said at the sound of music everybody bow to that gold and four hebrew boys said well we honor you and we respect you three hebrew boys but we will not bow the challenge is that the cosmos prospers you at the expense of the prosperity of your soul now here comes a generation saying we will not bow but we will still stand strong and the devil is saying by what technology and we tell them there is a wisdom that comes from above we will invade the systems and still be billionaires and be disconnected from the money it's a mystery that men and women will stand up and say sir as far as it is kingdom we are ready to invest this much we have the power the bible says the rich will rule over the poor not the rich christian the rich anything will rule over the poor anyone and a borrower will always be slave to the lender so the way satan makes you a slave is to make you a borrower listen to me very carefully let me show you one scripture we are soon going to pray please be patient with me we are rounding up genesis chapter 42 don't forget this scripture for as long as you live from verse 1 and 2 i was blessed when i was told about the economic sessions that you know the session that was going on that pastor i was so honored and blessed now when jacob saw that there was corn where now it is dangerous when it is only egypt that has corn because the increase is the of the earth is for all even the king is fed by it but in this case only egypt had corn and jacob said unto his sons why do ye look upon one another verse 2 and he said behold i have heard that there is corn in egypt get you down thither and buy from us from there that we may live and not die even a prophet dies when there is no corn listen to me it is always hunger that takes god's people to egypt there is only one reason why the saints will keep going to egypt hunger the search for bread will take god's covenant people to egypt where they they remain slaves there there was only one reason egypt did not say church come egypt only made sure there was bread there and even jacob released his sons please go to egypt and buy bread so that we will eat and not die when it is egypt that feeds you you will serve their god Is God speaking to us? And that in this season, God wants to raise people, mighty men, men who love God. Listen, when we talk about prosperity, please understand this from a kingdom standpoint. We're not talking about men who just, um, just for self-glorification. The agenda is bigger than that. These are weapons. They are weapons that will cause creation to submit to the name of the Christ there is a level of en economic empowerment you must have to find yourself in the corridors of power there are certain people who must be empowered for the kings to hear the counsel of God do you know that one king being saved has saved an industry so every effort to reach that king God is in it Please listen to what I tell you. We are going to pray. 
Many people are rising. Not everybody is lazy. And God in this season is... Let me tell you this. You know, we talk about billionaires and millionaires. We've not seen wealthy people yet. You watch what God... God, there are men who are in the cave of Adulam right now. They don't even know they will be financial apostles. They think they will be men of God. Because the training God is taking them through is not the training of, a, of, of someone who will be wealthy. He has not taught them anything about business yet. But their destiny is finance. God is thoroughly purging the flesh. He's thoroughly purging the desire for mundane things. And afterwards, he will invest a dimension of wealth that can change a nation in a day. There is a statement God is about to make with African in Africa. And I am glad that it's happening in our lifetime. Can I tell you this? Let me tell you sincerely. Don't let any man who does not name the name of Christ bully you. There is a strategy that God already put in place. The name of the strategy is called the church. The church is not a place of worship. It's a mystery strategy to be revealed in this time. And so God desires. God desires that we come into that understanding is more than just saving someone just from going to hell that is important we will continue to evangelize we will continue to see that people submit to the lordship of the christ but hear me kenya hear me africa god is calling on men and women who will insist until they ascend the mountains that will provide for excellence that they will command a dimension of influence influence the power of the Holy Ghost being upon you you become a leader in your field then you rewrite the rules like Esther do not be part of the few ignorant people that continue to think that the church's interest to be represented in every socioeconomic space is just carnal is the desire of a man of God to get no 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 it is a strategy to protect the name of Christ when Daniel began to pray the prayer life of Daniel was affecting the powers that be of the Medes and the Persians and he used people in the parliament are we together now to put a policy that for 30 days men do not pray we can only preach in the crusades when the policies favor us. We need men who sit down there and can defend the name of the Christ. And let me tell you, I know that some of you are there. I know that some of you have seen this in your dreams. Let me tell you in this conference and in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, the grace that must insist that you are at the top for the sake of his majesty, that grace must come upon you. I made up my mind that I will never pastor people who are only spiritual. We must raise men and women of influence. We must raise men who have strategic voices. Influence is important. Every rule is relative. It's relative to the powers that set it. We will vet these rules from the lens of God's interest. And if his interest is not represented, we will create a system that will change it. Until the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. It's been prophesied already and it will happen. In the name of Jesus. That the next time God grants us the grace to come to Kenya, we'll hear that there are 15 new TV stations. Not just church stations, stations. Well funded. To international standards by young people in their 20s, 30s, 40s. A day will come, people will knock your door and say, sir, we need help and you tell them sorry i'm praying they say what is that he said that is the name of the spiritual experience that connects me to the wisdom that you are being blessed by don't interrupt me you are free to join me or wait for me the ashamedness over god will end because we will have results that compel men to honor god let me tell you this pastor and i encourage every man of god here 
I am not one of those men of God that will say I do not love politicians. I do not love these people. <clears throat> when I find men of influence and their hearts are open towards me, I am friends to many people. I have my convictions and I have my values. But it, when we mentor kings, we mentor the land. Please listen to this. A day will come by the grace of God where the kings within this territory are under the influence of the servants of God represented here. That you will be able to give them the counsel of God and say this is the direction the Lord leads. And they will follow and follow through with the nation to prosperity. I am friends to many politicians. I am friends to many noble men. I honor them. I love them. But it's a privilege to be associated with them because they need help. Listen to me. Do not reject influence. It is not only wrong, it is sin. If you reject influence, it's proof that you do not love the purposes of God. We must embrace the influence that makes for prosperity, that makes for excellence. We must make up your mind that everything that matters in Kenya will have the voice of God represented. Whether it is your media stations, whether it is the music people. Are we together now? Yes. That nobody will come and shut any facility that is supposed to be for the purposes of the kingdom. And I pray that you join in the campaign to crush poverty out of Kenya and out of Africa. It is a noble campaign. It is not a campaign of weak people who love the things of the world. It is the men and listen, the, the weight of God is heavy. It takes resources to carry it. Please rise up on your feet. That the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. I have seen many visions about Africa. I have seen by the spirit the moves of God that is coming to Africa. That rejected stone. The Lord has revealed to me again and again. The labors of many people who have given their lives for the gospel in Africa will not be in vain. A generation is rising by the Spirit. Men and women like Prophet Joel saw. It will no longer just be crusades and evangelistic meetings alone. It will be the seven mountains well represented. Please hold hands with someone. We are going to pray. Our time is gone. apologize tonight because of time I may not be able to pray for the sick and to just prophesy and do an impartation don't miss the session tomorrow that I'll be ministering I will share with you somewhere there my encounter with the Lord Jesus and the instruction that he gave unto me and one of it pastor is that when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me I was like a dead man on the ground he didn't speak to me, but I was hearing everything he was saying. That was when I learned that in the realm of the spirit, you do not have to talk to speak. The language of God is light. And light at his brilliance left him and entered me. And when that light entered me, how I did not die is a mystery. No one would receive that kind of light and remain alive. And that was when a straight line was drawn from Genesis to Revelation. I started comprehending things that I never learned, never knew. Illumination of the Spirit. And in one of the encounters that I had again, the Lord told me, Son, everywhere I allow you to go, there will be people in that place who must receive the light that came from me to you.
and I had I saw an angel of the Lord who stood by me and he told me that this angel will walk with you he is called the angel of the Lord's presence please hear me this is not just a conference with men of God who have come to bless you it is a very defining moment in our lives very defining moment in our experience and I have to respect time our time is gone and many of us have to leave so I may not be able to minister and pray and prophesy and minister to the sick but please whatever sacrifice that you will make to be at the final session I want you to make that session but when we pray just one prayer point and I speak over your life and we're done tonight just one prayer point father let your kingdom come through my life lift your voice and pray let your kingdom come through my life is someone praying your kingdom reigns your kingdom reigns above all above all lord your kingdom reigns your kingdom reigns above all pray above all in my life here and now lord your kingdom reigns your kingdom reigns in my life in my life lord your kingdom reigns your kingdom reigns your kingdom reigns your kingdom reigns above all above all your kingdom reigns your kingdom let me just add one more prayer point lord show me the geography of my witness please help your wife i'm sensing an anointing on her and the lord is saying to prophesy to her madam i speak to you by the spirit there is a prophetic grace that is coming on you number one and number two the anointing that was upon esther is coming upon your wife pastor and the lord is going to be granting her access to kings and captains of industry this is the word of the lord and it will happen by the spirit i like you to pray lord show me where i occupy in these seven mountains open my eyes and grant me the grace it's time to represent your interest is someone praying Krata paruta seke paruta shalabadas. Shalabarada katos. We are done. Please pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Over Kenya, over Africa, your kingdom reigns. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. Your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. I really I really apologize my heart is burning and I feel so bad madam 
I don't know who you are this woman I don't know where you are coming from but please lift your hands I saw a horn coming upon you and I saw an anointing and the Lord says he's shifting you to a new dimension in life and a new dimension in ministry this is what I saw he said my heart shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed even with fresh oil these ladies two of you holding your hands I'm seeing an anointing like fire just left me and came on two of you this one lifting her hands alongside the one she's holding I'm seeing that grace is a very strong anointing and the Lord is saying he's opening you and opening your lives to new dimensions in the spirit new dimensions in the spirit it will not be like the old the Lord is saying he's bringing you into a new experience of power of grace of illumination father I pray over everyone there is a music artist here the power of God is coming upon you you are going to write songs your next album I'm seeing it by the Spirit right now I'm seeing a strong anointing please help them it's coming on a music artist someone you are in the music ministry is I'm seeing an eagle there is a grace for revelation Parokato Satyata is coming on your songs and God is giving it wings in the spirit it will go across the shores of Africa and bring glory to the name of the Lord hallelujah just two people please forgive me the power of God is coming on them and they will run physically running out now as I'm talking please hold them so they don't enjoy themselves this is what I'm seeing in the spirit physically there is a grace for speed that I must release before tonight's meeting is over and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah Karitoshia and he ran listen help them please I'm speaking to you by the spirit the hand of the Lord is upon me tonight and hear me many of you have been in one position for years many of you have been in one position for long I come by the apostolic and the prophetic I'm about to release the grace for speed when I pray some of you will begin to run physically please whether you are an usher or not hold them so they don't enjoy themselves right now I stand in the name of Jesus the son of the living God over Kenya Kenya hear me I speak to you receive the grace for speed 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 no more delay the king's business requires haste I prophesy and I declare over your hand grace speed over your heart grace speed in ministry in destiny I release you let the old go let the new come I call it by the spirit dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.